Barry Tompkins with Al Bernstein. We're back at Harris here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. We come now to our main event. This is for the USBA Welterweight title. I believe you said NABF. It is the USBA Welterweight title. Brazier and Pompey. And Kevin Pompey is a guy who has been in some wars. Kevin Pompey has done everything in boxing but win a world title. He created our fight of the year along with Tyrone Trice in 1990. This stamp Kevin is a top welterweight even in a losing effort. Closely fought bouts are the rule, not the exception for Kevin, like this split decision win over Daryl Lattimore. And it wasn't any easier against Graylin Curry, Donald's younger brother. He made it a tough fight for 10 rounds before Pompey got the nod, but that was nothing compared to the war with Buck Smith. Again, it was Pompey by a decision, but punishment was taken. And things were even dicier when journeyman Nick Rupa took him to school in front of his hometown crowd. He escaped with a draw, but Kevin might not be so lucky next time, like against Harold Brazier. Frazier said it best when he told us, I'm 38 going on 19. Well, the fountain of youth must be located in Harold's backyard in South Bend, Indiana. And having a few sports miracles taking place there anyway. All in all, he's beaten 87 foes in 11 years of boxing. The opponents just come and go, and Harold just keeps on winning. He's fought champions like Cornell Whitaker, one of his 13 losses, but he's never been one. At least not a world champion, at least not officially, though he did have a couple of chances. After this loss to Vince Phillips, Harold moved up to the welterweights and won seven of eight fights. He wants a world title, and he wants another milestone, too. 150 uh, fights uh, is, is a throwback to the old fighters and uh, I really like the old fighters, the way they fall and stay busy, stay prepared for fighting in, at the call of, uh, of another promoter. So I want to be like the old fighters, those were the great fighters. 150 fights, he says he wants. That's 49 more. His last fight on August 11th, as you saw, and tonight, you got to think he's going to get all he wants from this man. Kevin Pompey, who had a tough loss to Andrew Murray his last time out. Kevin Pompey in a situation he has something to prove. Al, let's talk about the AutoZone keys to victory. Well, I think Harold Brazier needs to get off first. In the previous fights, he hasn't done that, and it's hurt him. Combination is important. He'll, we'll explain more about that later, but he needs to push Pompey back. Now, I think Pompey needs to push Harold back. Get him going backwards where he can hit the land big power shot and get it done early. I'm not sure about Kevin Pompey going the distance after losing four pounds this morning. Yeah, it's going to really be interesting to see what kind of an effect that get that takes. The USB Welder A Welderweight title is up for grabs. Here's Ed Darian. From the Broadway by the Bay Theater here at Harris Atlantic City as Top Rank Incorporated and Budweiser, the King of Beers, in association with ours, proudly present Top Rank Boxing's main event. It's the USBA World Rate Championship and is approved by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board. The Honorable Larry Hazard, Senior Commissioner. The Honorable Jerry Gormley, Chairman. Members of the board, Gary Shaw and Al Daniels. Lawrence Wallace is the Deputy Commissioner and is sanctioned by the USBA. Its president, the Honorable Robert W. Lee, Sr. The Honorable Robert W. Lee, Jr. is a supervisor in charge and attendance at ringside. Our judges, Eugene Grant, Frank Brunette, and Al DeVito. In the ring at this time, the man in charge of the scheduled 12-round USBA title bout, referee Jimmy Condon. And now, my good friends, introducing the principals. First in the red corner, wearing the white trunks with the black trim. He weighed in at an even 147 pounds. All the way from South Bend, Indiana, with a record of 87 wins, 13 losses, one draw, with 58 knockouts. The former NABF and IBF Intercontinental Junior Runaway Champion. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome aboard the challenger, Harold Brazier. Brazier. And his opponent in the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the red trim. He too weighed in at even 147 pounds. From Troy, New York, 
He has 28 wins, 5 losses, 2 draws, with 12 knockouts. This young man is currently ranked number 6 by the IBF. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the USBA World Rate Champion, Kevin, the Troy Tiger, Pompey. Pompey. Good evening, gentlemen. You're boxing for the USBA Wellweight Championship. Okay, the three knockdown rule is waived. I want a fair one. I want a good, clean break at all times. Respect the belt. Good luck. God bless you both. Touch loss. Let's rock. So I look at Harold Brazier, who I think is probably looking around saying, where are all the people? Because it is a very quiet crowd here. It's not to say there aren't any people here. There are. But it's just Seconds out. like bring, a jury. Did you bring your library card or what? <laughs> I'm telling you. Well, hopefully Harold Brazier and Kevin Pompey will create the kind of action that will bring them to life. Pompey, of course, we've seen him so many times here on ESPN, and he is invariably in an action fight. We alluded, we showed on the highlight the fight he had with Tyrone Trice. Even in losing, remember losing to Santos Cardona up uh, in upstate New York, it was, a, it was an exciting fight in which Cardona just had a little too much for him. And look already, we talked about Harold Brazier changing things. He is pushing Pompey back immediately. Yeah, he said he just felt he had to do that now. He said he did, couldn't count on winning on judges' cards by being a counterpuncher. He felt it cost him several fights. I don't think I've ever seen Harold Brazier come out and just walk to a fighter like he is now. He always will see what the guy has, take some time, let, let the guy bounce a bunch of punches off his, his gloves and then go after him. Also, it may be that he might want to really keep an up-tempo meter going for at least for the first three or four rounds and just see what Pompey has because he did have to lose the four pounds today. Good left hand. Now, Brazier told us that where some fighters like Buck Smith make the mistake against Pompey is once you push him back and throw combinations, he doesn't punch. But you can't stay in there and then let Pompey get his bearings and throw a big shot. You'll notice Frazier's hitting him and then getting out of it. And also, Kevin Pompey is a miserable starter in fights normally. I mean, he always has a tough first round. <laughs> we would remind you one more time, at the risk of being redundant, that Kevin Pompey had to lose four pounds today. That's a lot of weight to have to lose in one day. It's counter right by Kevin Pompey. And that's one of the things with Brazier, by, with this more aggressive style, he will open himself up to having more punches landed against him than normally would be. You know, it's interesting, A.J. Liebling called this the sweet science, and, and these two guys would explain why that's called that. There, yes, there will be a lot of subtleties in the ring tonight that will have a big impact on who ultimately wins this bout. Neither man is a huge puncher, so they have to get the most out of what they have. Look, already you can see Pompey starting to get untracked here. It always takes him at least part of the first round before that happens. Left hook by Pompey also. This fight really is one of those fights that falls into that must-win category for both guys. Coming to the end of the first round, and a very tactical first round, and likewise a very difficult first round to score. We'll be back. Kevin Pompey threw this right hand. It missed badly, kind of overextended, shaking it out there. We hope there's no recurrence of what happened to Clarence Adams earlier on our show, which if you missed, he lost because he dislocated his shoulder. Boy, it sure did look like that too, didn't it? But he might have just popped it back in also. Harold Brazier said, I can hit Kevin Pompey with the right hand, and so far he has done so. Numbers in the first round with an edge to Brazier. I gave him that round. That came largely because of the work he did early in the round. That's what, what Kevin Pompey does best. He's got a very good double left hook. He gets more leverage in his left hook than he does in probably any other punch. But it also happens to be the punch that Harold Brazier is the best at blocking. It's tough to hit him with that shot. Look at, look at the defense of Brazier. 
Well, it's de you have to say it's defense that allows you to fight 101 fights. Yeah, that's for sure. And he pointed that out to us today. Nice overhand right by Pompey. And a good uppercut before that overhand right. And if there is a punch you're going to hit Brazier with, it's going to be the overhand right. He blocks most of the other stuff. <laughs> To judge this fight correctly, the judges are really going to have to pay attention. I mean, really. Because they're going to have to watch carefully as to what lands and what doesn't. Now, the Harold Brazier said an interesting thing when we were talking to him today about most fighters, as a matter of fact, and we've spoken of this on numerous occasions, don't like to look at tapes of their opponent. Brazier is quite the contrary to that. In fact, he says he, what he does is he turns the announcers off, much to his good taste, <laughs> and looks at their feet. He, he studies the tapes and telling you what he learned about Pompey, he feels is A, you can land the right hand, and B, when you punch in combination, he will stop punching. And uh, that's what Harold did in the first part of the first round. And for you English teachers out there, I mean he looks at the fighter's feet, not our feet. <laughs> oh, those pesky grammarians yeah. out there. That shot was blocked. The left hooks that Pompey is throwing are not quite getting there. Brace is doing an excellent job of pecking away with the jab and the straight right hand. And again, the overhand right, an excellent shot for Brazier to win. Yeah, that seems to be the punch that's there right now for Brazier. And he predicted that accurately to us yes. this morning. Kevin Pompey, we didn't have a chance to chat with this morning because he was busy weighing, trying to lose his weight, and lose the four pounds. Actually, it was six pounds over, but they allowed him to just lose four and come in actually two pounds over. End of the second round. Harold Brazier can get this sneaky right hand in. You see, it's because Pompey holds his left down, and Harold is getting the right hand in. He thinks that punch will be there for him, and it has been so far. Well, he hit him with an overhand right right there. It wasn't a great punch, but it got there. Numbers through two rounds, and Brazier continues with a slight edge. And the key thing there is he is also throwing a lot more punches, not just landing. Good, good counter from Pompey. That may have hurt Harold Brazier. <laughs> Another good uppercut. And Brazier returns the favor. You can see that both these men have a complete arsenal of punches at their disposal. Probably the only, the weakest punch of all the guys, of all the punches those two guys have, is the left hook from Brazier. But everything else, both these men throw very well. Brazier obviously wants to lay in there with Pompey in this fight. Kevin is showing a lot of power on the inside, which he has. He is also finding a home for that uppercut. Bring it up underneath there. Of course, let's remember Harold Brazier moving up from the junior welterweight division was not a huge puncher in that division. And as a welterweight, his main important fight, nice uppercuts, was against Larry Barnes, a fight which many believe he won, and he feels he won, but he didn't get the decision. But he's not a big puncher at this weight. He's not a big complainer either, and if no. he feels he won it, there's a yeah. pretty good chance he did. He called it a Christmas present for, uh, for Larry Barnes. Good right hand. He had shoulder problems, did Brazier, and very much like Buddy McGirt. In fact, he was talking to us about Buddy McGirt this morning. He was saying it took him a good three years, even after he came back fighting, to be able to crank that hook again. And he was saying that Buddy McGirt basically was a one-handed fighter, and he added a pretty darn good one-handed fighter. And you see even now, Brazier's left hook, not a big weapon. There he works the uppercut well on the inside. Harold Brazier's come back to maybe steal this round just by being very aggressive and throwing triple the punches that Pompey is throwing. You know, I, I think Pompey might have been hurt by one of those shots. He just kind of folded for just a moment. One of those uppercuts by Brazier. Brazier has pecked away and pecked away. And true to his words, he said, I'm going to be busier than I normally am. And Pompey is less busy than he usually is, though he's landing some pretty good shots. 
Pompey's landing the showier punches, but but Brazier is doing more. And you were talking about how difficult it is to judge, and that would that would really uh, lean toward that. Coming to the end of round number three, and it turned out to be a pretty close round. We'll be back. Here's Kevin Pompey landing some uppercuts and uh, a good left hook on the inside. And then Brazier coming back with the stuff that looks uh, very similar, except he didn't add the uppercut, which he normally does. So both men throwing pretty good combinations in the last round. In the third round, Pompey doing a little bit more, but Brazier's still throwing more punches. That's a lot of punches, 90 punches. It really is, and uh, it's interesting that uh, in terms of what was landed, Pompey ended up with the edge, but Brazier's so far ahead in numbers thrown there. And of course, the judge is not sitting there with their computers and uh, as our punch profile people are, so the intent of throwing 90 punches could have had the effect of it, excuse me. They don't, they don't actually decide on the intent, do they? <laughs> I've got Brazier winning all three rounds, even though I know they've been close. And I, I feel like these are rounds that Pompey is going to need to have. Good right hand by Brazier. That's, that's the punch that Brazier felt so strongly about. And he followed it up with good body work. You can almost feel, at least I, I think, you can feel Kevin Pompey pacing himself. Good combination again by Brazier, and he got in and got out. Boy, Harold said the right hand would be there, and uh, Kevin's had a hard time blocking that punch. Certainly saw uh, Rupa land it, and Buck Smith landed it a number of times against uh, Pompey. Kevin Pompey's been in some of our best fights over the years. The Buck Smith fight was, was a tremendous fight, as was the Trice fight and the Cardona fight. He's go on and on. He's had three tough ones in a row, too. The Buck Smith fight, as you said, a very tough fight. And then the Nick Rupa fight, which, if I recall that fight, we thought Rupa won. It yeah. wound up being a draw, and then he lost down in Georgetown, Guyana, to Andrew Murray. Swelling underneath the right eye of Harold Brazier. In fact, it's a big swelling underneath the right eye. Harold doesn't usually swell up like that. This fight really does speak to boxing. It's hard for me. Yeah, both men doing some excellent work in there. Nice right by Pompey. He took a counter right also from Brazier. That was a good right hand from Brazier. You know, Brazier's able to get there with the right hand, but again, the fact that he's not a huge puncher in this division as a welterweight where he's come up to from junior welterweight is having an impact. Another very good round, though, for Harold Brazier. But again, and you have to keep pointing this out, that this is a very difficult fight to judge, and Pompey's punches are showier. Fine. Well, it's interesting how we were eavesdropping during that commercial break into the corner of Kevin Pompey, and, and it just sounds to me like things are less than copacetic in that corner. Mm -hmm. I think they're concerned about the weight loss and what he had to go through to get, to get ready for this fight. Numbers are starting to weigh heavily in Harold Brazier's favor, despite the fact that Pompey has a higher connect percentage. Brazier's been very, very busy. Usually when a fighter comes in and tells you something the day of a fight, if they're not so definite about it, you wonder about it. I've never seen a fighter more definite than Harold Brazier was about what he could do, and sure enough, he's gone out and done exactly what he said he was going to do. He has pushed Pompey back, he's thrown more combinations, and he's landed the, the right hand. This is a battle for the USBA Welterweight Championship. We're going 12 rounds. We are in the fifth round. Harold Brazier right now with his back to the camera. Kevin Pompey with the red stripe on his white trunks. What? I was just going to say, so far, Brazier seems to have had the edge. Uh, you could make a case for every round. 
Yeah, they've been close runs. The last one I thought was pretty decisive for Brazier. One thing Kevin Bombay has been able to do is land some pretty big counter punches, and I think on some occasions maybe shake Carroll. So if, in fact, Kevin can land a few more of those and then follow up on them, there's no reason to think he can't turn things in his favor. And there clearly is a mouse under the eye of Harold Brazier. There's a right hand from Pompey with his back to the ropes. He fights very well with his back to the ropes. Always has, yeah. So he's a very good counter puncher. Buck Smith found that out when he thought he had Pompey in huge trouble, but couldn't get him out, and then Pompey came back off those ropes. Crowd here. This is an action fight. Yeah. This crowd is just on its hands. They are not uh, into it to the extent that you would think because it is a good fight, and both fighters are producing what they what they normally do. See, when Brazier, Brazier, while he wants to show the hook to Pompey, shouldn't get in a hooking contest. So there's that hook from Pompey. He gets every ounce of leverage in that punch. He really does. In fact, you would think he has 12 knockouts in his 28 wins, and you would think the way he cranks his punches that that number would be higher. I know. That's always amazed me. Look at that. Those are nice, good power combinations by Pompey. But is it enough to take back a round in which Harold Brazier did for two and a half minutes, did almost all the work. He's doing a nice job at the end of this round. And he's taking a bite out of Harold Brazier a little bit here. And that's what a lot of times the judges remember is that last 40 seconds. Well, we talk about it all the time. It's stealing rounds. And I think Kevin Pompey might have done enough to steal this fifth round. And a five. It's been a very entertaining fight. And we'll be back to Harris after this. Kevin Pompey coming back with a very good round in the fifth. A triple left hook with the last one landing. And it's hard to land left hooks against Harold Brazier. He covers up very well against those punches. In fact, Pompey outpower punch Brazier 26 to 11 in that round. Here are the totals of Pompey. Boy, with a decided edge. Yeah, came on strong. In the, the corner, Pompey in Pompey's corner. They were saying, do what you did in Brazier's corner. They were saying, keep the tempo up. And you know what's interesting? Most of those 40 punches have landed the last minute of the round. He's got it a three-phone fight. However, Stone and Strowman were in the fight that we had earlier, so... Yeah, I have Harold Brazier ahead by three points. I believe that part is accurate. That's correct. 49-46 for Harold Brazier. Well, the interesting thing, too, is Harold Brazier, is, since he is fighting a different kind of a fight, uh, although he's been kind of doing this the last few fights, he's in territory that's different for him and may find himself not quite reacting to everything. He's pushing the fight, which he doesn't normally do, and would be maybe more susceptible to get him. Pompey's doing a nice defensive job, too, right now, we might add. A lot of these punches by Harold Brazier are being blocked. Pompey's corner was telling him, you get in there, bang, bang, bang to the head to quote them, and then get out. Good body shot. These are more punches than Harold Brazier's been hit with in most fights. And it's because he changed his style. He's taking chances. He feels he's got to take some chances to get a win. Brazier going to the body, which is not a bad idea. Again, harking back to the four pounds Pompey had to lose, you might want to test that body. And these middle rounds are the rounds in which Brazier really thought he was going to win because he said Pompey loses his focus sometimes in the middle rounds, which does happen, and yet the last two rounds have been the best for Pompey in this fight. Yeah, well, knowing what he knows about himself, that he had to lose the four pounds, maybe that won't be the case in this fight. It could, you know, a negative could turn into a positive for Pompey. Nice combination there. Carol Brazier is really pushing with his punches, not snapping them out like he was, so that was a good right hand. It's a very close and competitive fight. Why doesn't that surprise me? No, with these two guys, you would expect that. Both throwing great crisp combinations. Another thing to note in this fight, rarely will you see either one of them throw just one punch. And another combination from Brazier. Another very close round. End of round six. We'll be back.
take a look at the combination that Harold Brazier threw right toward the end of the round. A round that primarily belonged to Pompey, but Brazier made a bid to steal it toward the end. Coming to round number seven as we look at numbers through six, and that's about as close as it could get, despite the fact that Brazier's thrown over 100 punches more. Pompey made a nice comeback in the last couple of rounds and won, I thought, both those rounds. So it's up to Harold Brazier to do what he said this morning, take these middle rounds. Oh, counter. You know, Harold Brazier is just a beat slow in the hand speed department from where he was maybe three or four years ago. And it's not that those are bad combinations, but Pompey is able to counter him a little bit better because he is just a smidge quicker responder. There's a term you don't hear in boxing very much. A smidge? Yeah. Yeah, that would be just a little bit more than a scotch and a little bit less than a cat. I think that's right. <laughs> for those uh, technical people out there. Right now, Kevin Pompey really coming on in this round strongly, working well on the inside. Do you attribute this to the fact that Brazier has changed his style? Yeah, that's a big part of it. He's being more aggressive, opening himself up more. And also, Pompey's adapted well to not being hit with by the Brazier right hand as much. And I'll tell you something else here. It, it really boils down to the fact that Brazier's punches are just not as hard as Pompey's because Harold Brazier has not been a welterweight his whole life. He's been a junior welter, although that left uppercut by Brazier got there pretty effectively, didn't it? And the eye of Harold Brazier continues to be. It's not yet really a big problem, but it's a situation that he's going to have to be very aware of with still a long way to go in this 12-round fight. Brazier coming on here in the middle part of this round. Counter shots by Pompey that Brazier would normally not get hit with. But he is in this fight. There's an uppercut from Brazier. Very good seventh round for both men, really. Uppercut again from Brazier. And a wow. left hand counter punch from Pompey. Both men landing big shots on the inside. When have you seen this many good uppercuts landed by a couple of fighters? Terrific fight so far. And an excellent seventh round for both men. Another good right hand from Pompey. There's Pompey doubling with the hook, can't get it through. Boy, these men are landing on the line here in the seventh round. A lot of punches connected. I'm going to be very anxious to see the numbers in this round. I would expect high on both ends. Boy, that's tough. You're dropping that left hand bad, man. I don't know what you're doing. You're dropping that left hand. When you get close to him, this isn't the corner now. This is up here. Can you get it up there? Uh, Harold Brazier. All he's doing is dropping his right hand over and over again on the inside. Pete Susan is the man who is in the ring. However, Harold Brazier is his own trainer and his own boss and his own tactician. He should have end swell in that eye. I think they, they had it on the day. Okay. Yeah. Here is Harold Brazier landing that excellent uppercut. Pompey has landed several also. And here they both land good shots. Pomp the Brazier with the uppercut. And Pompey will counter him. Well, again, another uppercut. Harold Brazier, what, what an excellent seventh round. Out. Round eight, Kevin. Out round eight. Go to the belt. So we await the start of round number eight. Here are the numbers in the seventh round. Boy, that is pretty impressive. Oh, that's boxing, folks. Both men throwing a lot of punches and landing a lot of punches. They land, the two of them landed 104 punches between them. And in one of the greatest rounds of boxing I ever saw, here's a good comparison for you given to us by the punch profile guys of Kenobi and Logan Hobson. In the Hearns Hagler fight, the first round of that fight, which I remember thinking was one of the great action rounds I'd ever seen, there was 101 punches landed. So three more in the seventh round of this fight. And a lot of power punches mixed in here. 
And you still got, I actually have Pompeii in front by a point now. But I think that's going to be the story of this fight. Yeah, I made the last round dead even. So that's why I've got Brazier. And I give the first four rounds to Brazier. It's conceivable judges might not have done that. I'm paying to use his jab a little bit more. Boy, he would be well advised to do that. And we're headed into the part of this fight where two things become a factor. One, the fact that Harold Brazier is 38 years old, even though he says he's 38 going on 19. But secondly, Pompey had to lose those four pounds. So which one of those factors will cause fatigue? Yeah, it's going to be something to really watch. Pompey is not doing as much in this round. I got one here. They get tight on his chest. In on his chest. Both men going to the body in large part. And I'll tell you what, a good idea for both of them, because they're thinking the same thing I'm, I was saying. You know, can I make the other guy tired? Brazier did a little more body work, I think, in the early rounds. And a lot of the left hooks of Pompeii through the body were blocked before. One thing that is probably worthy of note, and that is that Pompeii is breathing through his mouth a little bit more now than he was earlier. And that oftentimes is a sign of either a tiring or a tired fighter. I'm not suggesting that that is the case necessarily, but something to watch. It does not appear to be tired. Now, Brazier is getting into a left hook thing with Pompeii, and he doesn't want to do that. There's the nice uppercut. Pompey has slowed a bit in this round, Barry. And boy, has Harold Brazier concentrated on that body or what? Not out of the question that Pompey could be taking a round off here either. And still try to keep it close. And it has been a close round, but I think Brazier probably won it on attrition. At the end of the round, here's what happened. And you know, it was interesting, when they came out for this round, Harold Brazier immediately, as they say in the boxing trade, hit him with a funny bone. Yeah, Harold, uh, who is not about the cleanest fighter you'll ever find in a boxing ring, getting in a few sneaky ones toward the end there, made out of hurt and bell. Right back. You here are the numbers through eight rounds. Boy, that is some phenomenal numbers right there. And here, and Brazier throwing well over 100 more. So you got to take that into account. I tell you, the Pompey looks as though he's slow. Another low blow. Boy, another shot. Yeah, that's, he wants to work the body. And you know, he, you can, you can just feel it. And we talked about Harold Brazier, the, the tactician in the ring. Let him go. Let him go. You can feel the fact that he's saying, I want to go downstairs so hard that I would just take it out of this guy. I, I have to believe that that weight loss had an impact on him. I'll tell you what, too. Last round we said he was breathing through his mouth, but he didn't necessarily look tired. I'll, I'll say it right now. He looks tired. Looks like his legs are a little heavier. His arms don't have, I mean, his punches don't have a snap. Yeah, all Kevin punches. Kevin Pompey's been whacked around the ring by Brazier, and he is off balance a lot. And here's where I think Brazier should really go back to the jab, not just laying the inside with him. I really believe that Pompey's legs are gone here. He is very tired. Watch it. Watch his legs when he throws punches. He's lunging. He's sort of stumbling. Brazier's making it easier for him, I think, by laying on the inside. If Harold Brazier would stand the outside and jab until the straight right, he'd have a better shot. But he wants to get in and work that body, I guess, and lean on Pompey. Nice double left hook by Pompey. But your point is well taken. Those punches have done it the same leverage they had before. Now, all arm punches. No snap at all at Pompey's punches. Good counter left after the right by Brazier, but again, it doesn't move Harold Brazier. And Brazier dictating this round by and large. But it's interesting, Harold Brazier from the outside can land the jab in the right any time he wants, but he's laying on the inside with Pompey. See, there's the outside, the jab gets there for Brazier. But he wants to work that body. <laughs> That's amazing. Every time it looks as though one guy is just about done, and is just a crank one. Pompey is showing a lot of heart here, swinging punches, but I do think he's wearing down. I, I think 
think that's definitely true, but he's in a situation now where he's just trying to steal rounds here and steal rounds there and hope what he's done prior is going to be enough to carry it. And I'm not sure it is. Earlier in the fight, this left hook by Pompey would have moved Brazier back. It didn't. That's why Brazier was able to stay there and lead, hit him with the counter right. Well, in the corner of Kevin Pompey between rounds, the conversation was that Kevin Pompey is sick. And, of course, that... Well, I'm not trying to play doctor again, but it, you have the idea. It's directly attributable to the fact that he had to lose four pounds today. That's a lot of weight for a welterweight. I'm sure that took its toll. You know, Harold Brazier made the point, didn't he, before the fight, he said... You know, it's up to Kevin Pompey to do what he has to do. There are the numbers in the last round, and he didn't do it for this fight, so if I can take advantage of it, I will. And Harold Brazier, you almost have the feeling he senses that because he has made a decided effort to work the body the last two rounds. Boy, has he ever. And he has gone downstairs in a big way. But I think, actually, from the outside, he can be almost more effective with the jab and a straight right hand. So he is on the inside. He gives Pompey a chance to crank up that counter left hook. There he is. Frazier getting good leverage on his body shots. Pompey being a warrior, but he is giving every indication that he's less than 100%. Fight that guy. We've seen him, as I said, in some fights, win or lose, that have been spectacular. Santos Cardona, he lost to. Buck Smith, he had a, a, just a war with. And of course, the Tyrone Trice fights in 1990 is practically legend around the SPM. This one's right up there. Yeah. Frazier doing an excellent job of getting that left hook downstairs and now bringing it to the head. And still Pompey will crank a left hand yeah. down there. A nice combination. So that's beautiful. That is beautiful. Harold Brazier working both the head and the body. Not everything landed. Again, with Pompey come back. Good right hand. I, that might have gotten Brazier's attention. These are two special guys. They really are. You're not kidding. They told Kevin Pompey in the corner, we know you don't feel good, but you'll feel worse if you lose this fight. Brazier took the first part of this round in a big way. Has Pompey done enough to come back? Maybe. Right hand by Brazier after the uppercut by Pompey. What an excellent round. What an excellent round. Unbelievable round. Especially knowing what we know about Kevin Pompey. It was so good it almost woke this crowd up. Yeah, Very barely. Close. Come on, let's go. Well, Kevin, he is a you hurt. Gotta do the same puppy. thing these two rounds, 11th and 12. You can't, you can't, he's got a punch. Ready? Come on, baby. You gonna swallow some? How's that, okay? Yeah. Well, take it easy on the crease, baby. Yep. Don't let this guy know. Nobody know what's going on here, okay? Now you gotta go on your own now. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. You know what to do, okay? We get two more rounds and we gotta take them. There's no kidding about it, okay? Right over the top, okay? This is the time now, another level. Let's go now, come on, let's go, let's go. Let's go. This is it. Let's go. Let's go. Well, you really got a feel for Kevin Pompey. It's rugged, you know he's hurting in there, you can just feel it. And they told Brazier to come right out with the right hand, and he did it, didn't he? In that last round, in round 10, Brazier landing 52 of 107 punches. Pompey landing 34 out of 83. There is a total with Brazier ahead by just 15 punches. And yet, I have Brazier pretty far ahead in this fight now. Even though the rounds have been close. I got him ahead by only one point. It's been very competitive. But you know, they, they said in the corner, they feel Pompey definitely needs the last two rounds to win it.
They feel like their man is behind. Frazier at 38, he got used to work on cars. Now he sells cars at a Chevy dealership in South Bend. He's a good family man. He's an amazing guy. Both these guys are. As a matter of fact, you know, it's funny. I was just thinking to myself, you know, the old line, would you buy a used car from this man? And the answer is yes. Absolutely. Just a delightful man, as is Kevin Pompey. They're guys that have come so close to getting the brass ring, the world championship. Frazier had two chances against Roger Mayweather in a brilliant fight, which he lost the decision. And also gets Juan Kochi. Pompey is waiting for his world title shot, and if he loses here tonight, which it possibly will, I don't know if that title shot will ever come. It's interesting that in Pompey's corner, they were saying, nobody knows how you feel except you. Well, the fact is, America knows. And you really almost have to feel for the guy. Difficult ordeal, but then again, he put himself in this position by coming in six pounds overweight this morning. Unless, of course, his physical trouble started before that. And right there by Pompey. And as we said, he fights well off the ropes. And Pompey's doing some excellent body work as well. His punches still do have some power. And I, I really thought his legs were gone two, three rounds ago. And you know, Brazier's punches don't have quite the sting they had before either. Three punch combination oh. for Pompey, three punch combination for Brazier. Take that. And after a good right, Pompey counters with his own left. They're throwing excellent shots right now. Another good body shot. Boy, somebody's going to have to tell this crowd what a great fight this is. End of 11, one round to go. We'll be back. Follow Harold Brazier as he comes out in that last round. Boom, a right hand. To the head of Pompey, that's what they told him to do, and he did it. And there are three minutes left in this USBA Wonderweight Championship. And it, it's been everything you could hope for. Both of these men have given us a lot of exciting moments on Top Rank Boxing, and they're doing it again tonight. Headed toward, Brazier headed toward a thousand punch fight, the likes of which Pompey had with Tyrone Trice. They have produced another excellent match tonight. Well, you have Frazier by four points going to the final round. Brazier has by four points going to the final round. I have to fight dead even. And, and you could look at it either way. I, I really believe that, and I think it could be a very close decision. But I just feel like Carol Brazier has done the most and won most of the round. So far, uh, as we were just talking, yep, you had a four-point fight, and Pompey is really doing a good job in this round. From long range, no less. Boy, both men have used that uppercut effectively. And Brazier with a double right hand. And another one. Pushing Pompey back. The jab in the right hand is the ticket for Harold Brazier now. He can use it. He kind of abandoned the right hand in these last two rounds to go to the body, to work inside. Nice combination again by Brazier. And another right hand. Pompey tries to spin off the ropes. If Harold Brazier were a true welterweight puncher, he would have Pompey in all kinds of trouble. He just isn't. This is not a strong welterweight puncher. He gets the job done against him, but not going to do it with big knockout calls. Brazier is really having an excellent 12th round here. If there's doubt about this decision, he may be putting an exclamation point on it. Very heavy shot. Going back to the jab in the right hand is his staple. And the uppercut. Well, in this round, just like every other round, take your pick. You know, perhaps we use the word warrior too much in describing fighters, but I can't think of a better one to describe these two. 
Both have given us everything they could tonight. We're headed for the checkered flag, and so too are you. Checkered flag follows top rank boxing. Again, the uppercut, a big weapon by Harold Brazier, as it has been for Pompey also. But like with everything, it's just there's been more of it from Brazier. He's throwing, he'll probably end up throwing close to 1,100 punches. Well, it is over, and it has been a wonderful fight here at Harrison Atlantic City. Harold Brazier and Kevin Pompey. It's interesting, we talked about this fight as having plots and subplots, and it had oh, all of them, and it maybe a little yes. bit more than that. Oh, wow. oh, at 38 God. years old, that's a guy who's not hanging on to the boxing world, is it? It's a guy who still thinks he has one more shot at the big one. Whether he does or not is a question that remains, but we know this much, he was good tonight. Well, I'll tell you what, I went to the final round with the fight even, and I'm not sure who won the last round. I'm not even going to score it. So, Kevin Pompey, a guy who is clearly hurting, and hurting because of the fact, at least we assume, is that you look at the numbers, I'll get back to that story, but look at the numbers here, that's remarkable. They cannot accuse Brazier in this fight of not being active enough. He ends up with not a very big edge in numbers of punches landed, but when you've thrown well over 200 more than your, other, your opponent, you're gonna, you're, you're usually gonna win a fight. But then again, the judges are the ones that make the final decision, aren't they? So we await that decision. I wound up giving that round to Brazier. I, gave I him thought Brazier won it very decisively. I gave it to him by one point. I mean, the fight by one point. And we're set to go. Let's go to Ed Darien. Ladies and gentlemen, from Harris Atlantic City, we've got the scoring, and here it is. Judge Al DeVito scored 116, 113, Pompeii. While Judge Frank Brunette, he has it 115, 113, Brazier. And Judge Eugene Grant, he observed 115, 113 for the winner by split decision. And still, the USDA runaway champion, Kevin, the Troy Tiger Pompey. It was a gutsy effort, to be sure, and you almost have to feel for Harry Brazier. I'm not trying to be in a rooting situation, but it's tough. Well, I think they blew it on this one, truthfully. All right, Kevin Pompey is the winner in a split decision. A wrap for us from my partner, Al Bernstein. I'm Barry Tompkins. 